Hey buddy, some nuts guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far and welcome back for more RL Craft. Today we are going to be talking about the best baubles in RL Craft and I'm going to talk about the end game best baubles that you can have for a couple of different situations. And I'm also going to talk about some baubles that I think are the best at various stages of the game, sort of early, mid, etc. And I'm also going to talk about a couple of honorable mentions. Alrighty. So, what do we have here? In this chest, I have everything that I want to mention, I think. Now, if I forget anything or you guys have any special preferences for certain things, please feel free to let me know. Some of this might be something you haven't thought of or might be controversial. Who knows? Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. All right. So, first things first, let's start with early game. So early game, we've got a couple of a couple of baubles here, which are really nice to pick up as soon as possible. You've got your arrow quiver and your tool belt. They're made with leather and they're very simple to craft. And they can also be reforged with leather, giving you uh, healthy or undying for additional health in the early stages of the game. So those are nice to pick up as quickly as possible. The tool belt, honestly, has really nice utility throughout the entirety of the game anyway, just being able to carry extra items and you can actually key bind the tool belt so i press r well i'm not wearing a tool belt so i key bound the tool belt so that i press r and it opens up the radial menu so i can i don't need to like pull it out and do some funny stuff with it to to, to access the inventory in there i can just press r and pull things out and put things in it's very nice and easy next one's here we have the potion ring of strength and the po potion ring of speed because these are both also very easy to get the potion ring of speed easier to get sooner the potion ring strength is also quite easy to get if you break the magma blocks in the blacksmiths in villages you can get a couple of magma chunks to make magma cubes or it's really not that hard to get a little bit of blaze powder or slime to be able to make the magma magma blocks to be able to make the ring of strength and these are reforged with gold which you should get a half decent amount of fairly early on so again you can reforge those quite quickly while we're talking about potion rings, we can move on to mid game and we've got a couple of other nice mid game options here, which is the potion ring of regeneration, which does cost uh, gas tears to craft and a nether star, but it's not too hard because you can uh, get the gas tears from the cacao demons in the nether and beating a wither just isn't, isn't that difficult. So actually that's pretty easy to get and it's just nice to have the constant regeneration. You know, if you take a little bit of damage, you don't need to use any heals to heal up. You just have that constant regeneration, which is nice. The Potion Ring of Resistance. Now, this is a little bit more difficult because you need the Heart of Diamond. If you loot a Ring of Resistance, great. Um, you can get those from Four Tower Dungeons. or I think Four Tower Dungeons are pretty much the best place to get them. You can also get them at the top of Thick Battle Towers. Or if you get lucky and find a Stoneling that drops a heart of diamond, then it's very easy to get this early on. If you do like early caving, looking for heart crystal shards or looking for trolls and you see a stoneling, you want to ideally put a diamond in your hand because they won't teleport away if you have a diamond in your hand. However, if you run up to them and kill them really quickly, particularly if you have maybe like a pike with some extra reach, then you can kill them before they teleport away, even without a diamond in your hand. And the, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, you get a heart of a diamond. It's fairly, it's like 25% drop, drop chance. I can't remember the drop chance. It's fairly low. I seem to never get them when I kill stonelings. But uh, I've seen people get two in a row as an example. So that can be a really nice one to pick up. Now, I don't have the actual rings for these because you can't pull them out of JEI. They're not in JEI. They don't have recipes. But there are four potion rings um, that I quite like out of the secret potion rings that you can, again, loot from four tower dungeons or the top of thick battle towers, maybe elsewhere as well. But those are the two, uh, the top of four tower dungeons and the top of thick battle towers. Those are the two most reliable places that I've found to get these potion rings. Um, the potion ring of iron skin is very good, probably slightly better than the potion ring of diamond skin. Then you've got the potion ring of health boost and the potion ring of reach which is quite nice. So those are four that are quite nice if you manage to loot them from those dungeons that I mentioned. Of course, we all know the dragon's eyes. We should be aiming to get a dragon's eye as early as possible. Um, you know, it's gold glowing ingots and you got to kill a dragon. You got to get the tier five dragon skull. If you're lucky and you find one in a desert or uh, in a cold biome, great. Um, but, uh, but of course, you're going to need to get your tier five skull to be able to craft that but you should be aiming to get these as soon as possible really the fire dragon's eye is still going to be my preference because of the lava immunity um, but the ice dragon's eye does give you immunity to hypothermia which can be nice as well 
Now these three you can kind of pick up at any stage of the game. Uh, the Artifact Feral Claws. So these are one of the new baubles that drop from the Mimics. So a Mimic has a 1% one, 1 chance of spawning from a chest that is a chest that goes by vanilla generation rules. So non-pre-generated loot. I think these are... I've been told they're villages, but I haven't confirmed it. I haven't found one in a village. Dragon roosts, uh, dragon dens, lycanite dungeons are the best places to find mimics from my experience and from what I know. Um, and these are really good. So these increase your melee attack speed very quickly, and they can also be upgraded, which I'm going to be talking about here in a moment. So if you pick these up, these are really good. They give you a big boost in attack speed. The Phalus Claws you can get kind of at any stage. As far as I'm aware, just depends on where you get it, if you, whether you get it in loot. Um, and they're quite interesting because they give you plus 25% attack damage. So that's uh, that's interesting. The Stone of Greater Inertia drops from Infernal Infernals. Uh, I think the only potentially the orange or maybe, maybe the yellow, but basically the high tier Infernal mobs um, with the rainbow particles can drop these. Now this is... This is, this is quite nice to have on most of the time just because it gives you resistance to fall damage, which is negligible because you're going to have probably feather falling and advanced feather falling and advanced protection. That all gives you good stuff. But it's very nice for the speed and the jump height. Basically, you can just yeet around at high speeds all the time. Now, the Wrath Pendant is uh, an end game bobble because you have to beat a Malgalich to get the Wrath Pendant, or you can find it in a Shivaxi monument. I'm still never found a shivaxi monument so it's not that's not a reliable way to get it you get it as a guaranteed drop from killing a malgalich so obviously it's going to be an end game bobble on that basis now you probably saw some missing from that chest that's because i'm wearing them now there's one thing here which is circumstantial and i'll explain why i've got it on but the cross necklace is really good actually i i was totally sleeping on this for a long time and it was when I was doing a Blighted Infernal playthrough, which uh, I'm doing as a 100 Days video, which will hopefully come out soon. In fact, might even come out this Saturday. Anyway, this increases the length of invincibility when damaged. So essentially, when you're being swarmed, or like when a Darkling attaches, because Darklings hit you like bam, 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 bam. This will increase the length of invincibility when damaged. And this saved my ass on a number of occasions where I know I was swarmed by a Darkling plus multiple mobs. And... <laughs> I was like, how did I live? I should have died. But I think it was the cross necklace. And I know the cross necklace made a big impact in, in a number of circumstances. So this can is actually a really good, really good bobble. Onk Shield is just phenomenal. It's so good. You should try and get this as quickly as possible as well. I have a guide on how to get all the individual elements for this because you need a buttload of other baubles to be able to craft this. It's a combination of a ton of different baubles. Um, I have a guide on how to get all those different items. There's a few very specific ways that you can actually get some of these items very easily um, instead of just kind of hoping in RNG. Uh, so if you want to get your, learn how to get your Ankh shield earlier rather than later, check out that video. The Shield of Honor. It's a little bit RNG to get this because, uh, well, you can actually can use the, um, the Dragon Egg, can't you? Uh, the Ender Dragon Egg. But if you're playing on a server and you can't get the Ender Dragon Egg, then you'll have to kill a Tier 5 and hope that you get a Dragon Egg dropping. But this is really nice, especially because it gives you, um, it ignores one in every five hits and, and, and pure, pure damage negation of every fifth hit. And it also gives you 10% chance to ignore headshot damage, which is quite nice. Uh, it also gives you resistance. Now, the Broken Heart, this didn't work for a really long time. And I think this pretty much was, I think this was only fixed in 292 in the most recent update. So up until just recently, this was a basically a useless bobble. This basically lethal damage destroys empty heart containers instead. And then you sleep to regenerate heart containers. So instead of dying, you actually just lose permanent, you lose some of your heart, heart containers. And then you will... Um, get those back once whenever you sleep um now that coupled with the undershirt every 60 seconds taking fatal blow when from a critical limb uh is taking a fatal blow when a critical limb is above two hearts will reduce you to half heart instead of killing you so basically the undershirt total you know it's non sequitur because it's not a bobble but that plus this will give you additional survivability particularly uh in the uh, in the lost cities when you're getting hit for very heavy damage the poison stone is fantastic when you have venom uh viper and envenomed on your weapon 
because it gives you a 20% chance to poison enemies for two seconds. Well, Viper will do that anyway, but deals plus 40% damage to poisoned enemies, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, that's, that's a big boost in damage, uh, and your enemies are pretty much going to be poisoned on the after the first hit most times. So you're going to be doing a lot of extra damage on your second hit, basically. Now, I have the hardy, uh, the doing a free action here. And this is kind of an honorable mention, but also I'm using it for a specific purpose. The main reason I have this is it's part of the requirements to make the Ankh Shield, but unfortunately you lose the ability to have free movement through cobwebs. Allows free movement through cobwebs. And I hate cobwebs. Anyone that's watched my content enough, you'll know I have a vendetta against cobwebs, or they have a vendetta against me, one way or the other. So this is actually... Kind of a joke, kind of a meme, but also, say for example, in, your, in the Lost Cities and you get in a tense situation, you you already have loads of buffs. Like, there, I, there's not really much else you might put in this slot because you've already got all the buffs from, like, you can either drink potions or you can have the potion ring, put on the potion ring, drink wine to extend the duration and then take the potion ring off. So essentially, like, this slot is kind of a, what do we put here? And this actually, I think, is is an underrated bauble in the sense of allowing you free action through cobwebs. Because a cobweb can kill you. Let's face it, if you get an infernal mob, a rare or something, and it has the uh, webbing ability, and it webs you in a, in a bad situation, you're very probably dead. Cobwebs have killed me on a number of occasions. So that's why this is there. Now, another one that I actually just remembered, which I almost forgot about, and I know a few people have been using this, is the Wither Ring. Now, this is a 20% chance to wither enemies. Your, your Invendum should already be doing that, but it also heals one hearts when attacking withered enemies. Now, I haven't done a lot of testing with this, but if you have Nunchaku with Viper and Invenomed, you're going to be withering your enemies, and then you're going to be getting a heart every time you attack withered enemies. And that's pretty decent with the, how fast the Nunchucks are attacking. So actually, the Wither Ring is probably a fairly decent option that you could have in this slot as well, instead of the Ring of Free Action, um, or at any stage, if you have Nunchuck, Nunchucks. 20% chance with their enemy is pretty low, so you'd want to have the Envenomed uh, Enchant on the weapon, because that gives it a much higher chance of getting, giving them Wither. Um, so and that healing one heart every hit, especially when you've got like the, the Fire Gauntlet or the... Um, the Feral Claws, uh, and you've got the Swift of Slashes enchant, your attack speed is so fast that actually that getting that one heart every hit, that's going to be a lot of hearts in a very short space of time. And finally, we come to the Fire Gauntlet. Now, the Fire Gauntlet is incredibly RNG-based to get. Pure RNG-based. High... Uh, it's... I don't know if I'll ever end up getting it in a playthrough, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, so you gotta get, the, the, the Fire Gauntlet is made from the Mechanical Glove and the Magma Stone. The mechanical Glove is made from the Power Glove and the Feral Claws. So you have to get all of those items. You have to get all of those items, and they're all Mimic Drop items, so they can only drop from Mimics. You have a 1% chance of a Mimic spawning from a chest in the areas I mentioned earlier. And then you've got a bunch of different baubles for them to potentially drop. And you have to get these, what is it, four, one, two, three. No, it's three baubles. You have to get the Feral Claws, you have to get the Power Glove, and then you have to get the Magma Stone to get the Fire Gauntlet. But honestly, any any variation of this is, is really good. If you get the Feral Claws and the Power Glove, upgrading that into the Mechanical Glove is great. And if you get the Magma Stone on top of that to get the uh, Fire Gauntlet Bog. This is probably now the best bobble, potentially the best bobble in the game. Definitely the best offensive bobble. I still think the Ankh Shield is incredibly good um, as a defensive bauble. The Honor Shield is very good. You know, these these are all very, very good baubles. Definitely the best offensive bauble. Again, I'd say the Ankh Shield is one of the most core because when you're drinking wine, there's a bunch of negative effects. And I don't think Silver Armor gets rid of all those negative effects anymore. I'd be wrong, but I don't think it does. I think the Ankh Shield is now the only thing that gets rid of all the negative effects of drinking wine. So, finally. Oh, and the reason... Okay, so the reason why I'm wearing the Cross Necklace instead of the Wrath Pendant is because you can get the Sinful buff and then drink wine to extend the duration. And so you don't need to wear the Wrath Pendant at all times. Now, if I'm just running around like not doing anything particularly crazy, like the Lost Cities as an example, 
Um, I probably just wear the wrath pendant because I'm not drinking wine. But any time that I'm going to be drinking wine, I can instead use the gluttony pendant. So let's go and move on to the honorable mentions. We've got the gluttony pendant. So the gluttony pendant, eat faster, and it grants basically instantly eating. And it grants the sinful buff when you eat. So the sinful, the sinful buff is really good. Um, it gives you plus damage and plus armor. Wrath pendant does give you the extra plus two damage as well. But there's so many things that give you extra damage that that plus two is a little bit negligible. But the sinful buff uh, gives you plus damage, plus armor when you eat. So basically, you'd eat, you'd use the gluttony pendant. Like if you're buffing up for something intense, maybe a, a, maybe one of the boss fights or maybe the lost cities, you take the, you wear the gluttony pendant, eat a battle burrito, then you can drink your wine, because that'll give you the sinful buff from eating the battle burrito, and then also that duration will be increased. And then you can take the gluttony pendant off and wear something like the cross necklace as an example. Stone of the Sea. I don't really use this. Honestly, I don't use this really ever at all personally if i had one the only time I, I never have it is the thing but if i did have it the only time that i would use it is if i'm doing underwater dungeons and um, there's also a new blue lycanite dungeon which is an auto underwater dungeon so any underwater doom likes or underwater lycanite dungeons is the only time that i would use this gives you extra swim speed gives you infinite oxygen as long as your oxygen is maxed when you go in the water it enhances your swimming and it also gives you, and this is another nice thing, it gives you immunity to thirst. Um, so I believe you can, uh, I, does it enable, does it disable parasites? I feel like it disables parasites. So you can just basically drink dirty water whenever you want, and you'll be fine. Um, it also disables the blur when entering water. Basically, if you're doing underwater stuff, Sun of the Sea is great. Uh, we got the Pride Pendant. Uh, it's kind of okay um it's in here because it's fairly easy to make you know if you if you get a um if you get a sin pendant or you want to craft a sin pendant early on you get a crown you can also craft the crown um so you can get this fairly early on and as soon as you have sort of vampirism life steal or regeneration you're at max health a lot of the time and having that sinful buff is actually very good um so i would probably still use a cross necklace over this personally but if I, you know, manage to get this before, because you can't craft the cross ne necklace, the cross, ne cross necklace is uncraftable. Oh, you can craft it. I'll cut off my legs and call me shorty. Um, no, uh, you can craft the cross necklace. Well, either way, Pride Pendant is still, still half decent. Um, there might be times that I end up using it. And lastly, we've got the Polarized Stone. Now, the reason that I've got this here, I would never wear this. Um, but the reason that this is here is because you can just keep this in your inventory and you can press, uh, and this basically pulls items towards you, pulls items and XP towards you. So if the, you know, these are on the floor and I've got this in my inventory, you can put it here in your inventory and right click it and then it'll pull items towards you. It'll also pull XP. So you get, you know, if XP is too far away or below you, or basically it just makes it easier to get the XP or I'll collect any items. It's very nice for certain situations, particularly, you know, if you're doing farming, you can just farm your whole area and then all the items will just follow you around and you can pick them up all at once as an example. But it's also quite nice because you can, you see the keybind backslash. So you can just backslash keybind to turn it off. You can, you can just keep it in your inventory. You don't even need to have it on your hotbar. You can just keep it in your inventory and you can turn it on and off with backslash as the keybind. So that's why that's there. Um, I would never wear it, but it is actually quite useful. I, in fact, I have this, I, you can put this in your tool belt as well. So I usually have this in my tool belt um, and then I'll whip it out. Or if I know I'm going to be using it, you know, for an extended period of time, I'll just keep it in my inventory somewhere. Now, I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about. And if you guys have any, you know, if you, if you want to contradict me or you have any additions that you think that I missed out on or you know, you want to discuss the merits of one bobble over another, please feel free to jump in the comments. I'm always responding to pretty much every single comment. Um, although comments are getting fairly numerous these days, so I might not respond to some of the arbitrary ones. Um, but I'll still give you a, you know, a like and a heart. Um, but, um, but I try to reply to everything that's either a question or, you know, sparks conversation or, you know, and feel that I feel like merits a response, basically. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, consider subscribing. And it's always great to see you in the comments. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. Some nuts guy. Grab gaming by the nuts.